So we're doing something a little bit different today, working on a car, but a real one, not an RC car. And the problem is this. If you look here, if I put my fingers in here, you can notice, well, I hope you can notice that it is very low. It's only two fingers. Whereas if I go to the other side of the car, it's much higher, three. So what's happened, what I think's happened is the rubber mount at the top is uh, crushed. So it's going in. I've actually changed the shocks and springs on this car before, about three years ago. Um, but I never, char never changed the top bush mount. So I think that's what's finally failed, but I've managed to find all the parts. So what I'm gonna to do today is we're gonna take the wheel off, change all the front suspension, the shock, the spring, the top mount, the rubber, uh, the bush at the bottom, the whole lot. So something a little bit different for you. <laughs> so first thing we gotta do is jack up the car, take the wheel off, have a look at it. Then we've got to tension the spring down, take it off. So let's crack on and get that done. So the first problem I've got is because it's sagging so much, I don't have any clearance and the jack I've got is quite a substantial one. So I think what I'm gonna do is put something down, drive up onto it, to give me the room to then jack the car up. So let's try that. So the next thing I need to do is compress that spring so that when I undo it, it's shorter. So the plan is I've got to place the A stand underneath this arm, lower it down to put the weight back on it. Then I'll clamp the spring at the top. Then I'll undo the bolts. When I then let jack it up again, it should be stay short and I can get it out if that makes any sense. So I'll put the A stand in, lowered the car down to push this back up again, and that basically compresses the springs. See, they're now more compressed than they were before. Now we take this and fit that on each side, do it up, that will hold it. Then when I jack it up before, it will stay compressed and then I'll be able to take it out. So I fitted this spring clamp in and it's now tight. So the next job is to remove, I don't know if you can see, that bolt there. But being that it's right at the bottom, uh, it gets all caked up with general crap. So uh, I've been using penetrating fluid on it and I've just cleaned it with this little fella to get the threads clean. It's a 21. God, it's very noisy today around here. There's lots of uh, airplane around here because of the vintage uh, museums. Right, so I've got to get that bolt out. Once that bolt is out, then I can lower the suspension again, and then that should come up, clear, and then I can drop it down. And then I've just got to undo the bolts at the top. Right, let's keep going. So progress has been made. I've actually removed that bottom bolt, which is this monster. This one's the hardest one because it sits in all the water. And now the actual shock is sitting free. So all I've got to do now is drop the, take that away, let this fall down, jack it up, undo the three bolts here, and then I should be able to lift it out. Okay, so I've managed to get the suspension over the arm, so it's now just sitting here, which means that I can just drop it out from there. So the next thing to do, so this spring coil is holding it to give me the space I needed to lift it over. Next, I've just got to undo these bolts and then we should be able to drop it out. So I've removed the old shock from the car. The problem is one small thing I forgot, the dust cover inside. I'm gonna need that. Unfortunately, that means I've got to compress the spring, take the top off, decompress the whole lot, and then take the dust cover out, 
which is a lot of faffing around just for the dust cover where I should have bought them I could have just built the new shocks so dismantling the old shocks the thing is the one thing I found is the shock seems to be okay but I think maybe the sag is coming from that bush so hmm, I might have to change that arm which is a bit of a faff because it's quite tucked in under there so we don't know yet so I'll change the suspension anyway the hardest part apart from building up the shocks is getting this massive bolt out and because I've done that now it will be a lot easier to take out if I have to do it again so but nothing seems to be wrong now I have changed these in the past the spring and the whole shock I was I thought maybe it would be the rubber up here that's perished but it doesn't seem to have either so I get the feeling that may be the issue but hey we've got all the new suspension anyway these have been on the car for quite a while so and this car is really heavy on the front suspension because the, the engine in the front of this really heavy and being automatic it's always leaning on the, the front when you brake all the time so we'll change them anyway but I may have to order that bottom arm if it doesn't fix this sagging problem but we'll soon find out right now let's get this undone so i've now undone the nut on the top after tightening it down a little bit so we've removed everything the this top hat looks to be in pretty good condition doesn't look like it's i thought it might be failing in there maybe a little bit but it doesn't look too bad so i'm thinking more it's that bush hmm so i've got to take the tension off this one but as you can see there's the other one you can see how tight how much pressure you got to get on this so i have to be very careful with this as i undo it as this can kill you so that's the spring totally decompressed and now i've got to do it again to this one and you can see that's just how much i need to compress it to get that bit through there to put a nut and bolt on it yeah which is fun so now i've got to put these these back onto that and do them up slowly but the more I look at this, the more I think the problem is the actual bush in the car, not the shocks. I mean, these are looking a bit worse for wear and they've probably done about 70,000 miles maybe. So, hey, swapping them over is worth doing. So next thing, tighten that up, get that on, use the new nut. Then we've got to try and get it back on the car. Several days later. So after a good while, I've actually got it on, but it's not exactly straight. So what I've got to do now anyway, to get it back on the car, I've got to now compress it again, straighten the top and then get it small enough to put in the car. So let's do that. It's taken me an hour to do this from the last shot you saw. Okay, so I've now bolted it back into the top section. And next we've got to basically repeat what we did before I've got to ratchet that up to allow it to have more space so that I can lift it over that post and then put the pin back in. Sounds easy, but it does take rather a lot of time. So there you go, that's the bottom back on again and it's all fitted and over up front. So all I've got left to do now is put the plastic trim back, put the wheel back on, lower it all down and that one's done and then we'll see if it's actually fixed that problem but i don't think so after putting that bolt back on in here that bush on that bottom arm i think it is gone so that needs to be replaced i think that's the problem oh uh, well never mind let's find out shall we so you're asking yourself why are you working on this again well turns out there's been a bit of an issue i was sold these and they're the top of the spring mount that goes into the top of the shock turns out they sold me the wrong ones this new one is actually different to the old one if you line up the location tabs are different so what's happened is i fitted it and i've had to rotate it to get it to fit so uh, that means that this shock is then not sitting right if you can see that so i've taken the old rubber and I fitted it to the new one. So all I've got to do now is compress that down, change that over and then put it back on the car again. So uh, yeah, thanks whoever did that. I didn't notice it, but if you look, it's not sitting right. So let's string it up again, 
take that off, fit this one. <laughs> so second time is the charm. I've just finished it. God, it's taken me ages. I've basically done it twice today. So it went back much better. It definitely needed that correct um, spring mount at the top. So there we go, but it still didn't fix the problem. It's, I mean, it's a little bit higher, but then that's because the shocks are um, gonna have to settle in tomorrow. I'm gonna do the other side, but that shouldn't take me as long because doing this one twice, well, I kind of know what I'm doing now. <laughs> So the plan is to do the other side. I had a look at the bottom arm online, they're a hundred quid. So uh, I'll have to pick up two of those and do those, but it should be easier to do those now that that bottom pin has been done twice. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna call it for tonight and we'll carry on tomorrow. Right, this is day two, the other side is done. We're now gonna do this side. I've definitely got to order a lower uh, arm, I forget what they're called, for that side as the bushing at the bottom has definitely failed. So I'm gonna check on this side because this side might have been done. I've had a few bits and pieces done when it goes in for MOT when they find uh, bushes that are playing. So I sometimes just say, yeah, get on with it, just do it while it's in there. But we'll have a look. I'm hoping this side's been done and that side just needs to be done as I'll probably just get someone else to do it. <laughs> as I'm getting a bit old, to be on my hands and knees for hours on end. Right, let's take the wheel off and see what this side's like. So next we need to get this massive bolt off that's here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is put some penetrating fluid on it and give the threads a bit of a clean to make my life a bit easier. This is what I had lying around, penetrating fluid, nothing special, I think I picked this up from Halfords. So we've got to loosen off these three bolts with a 13 mil socket. Pretty straightforward, just loosen them off a little bit. Don't take them off completely because we need it to carry the weight, but just to make sure that you can get them. Otherwise you might want to put some penetrating fluid on them. But being that they're under the engine, they don't really get rusty at all. So as you can see, mine are really clean. So super easy to undo them. So I've removed the old one from the car. It's just come out. And on this side, the same as the other side. I need to replace this as this bush here is definitely on its way out. Maybe this one too for the uplink. The main thing about this one that's a problem is that it's right up in here. So I may pay someone to do that one. I don't know. This bolt doesn't look too bad. This bolt doesn't look too bad. That one up there could be a bit of an issue because you've got to drop the whole tray off the bottom of the engine and it's a bit of a faff without a ramp but this bush is definitely seen worse days seen better days should i say so also these cars are prone to this problem and this was no exception the bottom spring goes in and over time it snaps off so what happens eventually is it fails higher. This slides up inside and then drops the car down. So it can be a bit of an issue. Tends to, for some weird reason, tends to happen at night time when the car's sitting overnight. Now it's broken off quite, quite close to the end. Usually it's around this side and then it causes a problem. And I had that before previously on the other suspension. So this is suspension that I fitted but it's been on the car probably about eight, nine years. So it's due a change again, because I've obviously I've had this car for like 15, 17 years, something like that. Right, so we've got to compress this down a little bit because I need the rubber from up here, unfortunately, and I need that dust cover in there as well. So I've removed the old spring. 
Now, one thing you've got to be really careful, there was a lot of energy stored in this, which is why I use these, but they've still got a slippery one, which is dodgy. Anyway, so what I do, what I found is when you're putting compression on, you want it to be even, don't overdo one, because if you overdo one, the other starts to get a bit loose. And what happens with these, because they're, they've got these guides, it will fly over, and then you have to start all over again. So count your turns. So if I undo this, I'll do quarter of a turn, I'll count them, do 10, then do like another 10, and then I'll do 10, and then I'll do another 10, and then it slowly releases it. And you don't want to be too tight on one side, or you do 10, change, do 10, that's probably a safer way of doing it, 10, 10, 10, and it will slowly release it evenly. If you just go crazy now and undo one, it will banana on you and it causes problems trying to take it apart speaking from experience <laughs> right let's release this and then we can start building up the new shop right so the next thing we've got to do is i've got to take this rubber out of here because i'm not using this top plate i'm just using that bottom rubber as there is rubber inside which i don't want so we want to put it into that one over there that one so getting this out is a little bit difficult so i have to use a flat bedded screwdriver so after a good while i've managed to get the nut on the end now the thing you've got to be really careful of which makes this job even more of a pain is the clearances that you get to get this plate on you've got to be careful that they clear so as you can see, this one is super tight there. So I'm gonna have, as I undo it, I've got to be careful it's gonna clear to get it out. So yeah, that's fun. But having the bolt on the end now makes it a lot safer because it can't totally release. It can only release into the actual cap, but these still can fly off. These are much better, but I had to use a third one to put it down as I just needed a little bit more. So now we've got to slowly undo everything and hopefully we're there. And finally, that is a new shock, We're all ready to go back on. Oh, that was a faff. The cap actually got a little bit stuck on the top of the compression spring. So I had to back it back. I had to do it up again to try and get it to go straight, but it's done. So that's the hard part and the quite dangerous bit out of the way. Next, we've just got to shove it back in the car, which shouldn't be too difficult. Right, I've pushed it up in there and we've just got to do up these. Super easy. Then we've got to move on to getting the actual shock back over the arm. Right, the last thing we've got to do with this is do up that bolt. And then uh, I'm pretty much there. I've just got the, maybe do I'll do the fog light, we'll see. I forgot to say, whenever you're doing up a bush, when you're finally doing up the bush tight, you need to set the ride height of the car because if I do it too tight now when it compresses to stationary it will be under rotation so what I've got to do is put an axle stand under the car put some weight on the suspension then do it up and then it won't be under so much stress otherwise the uh, bushes fail way quicker and that's the thing sometimes when you put it in the garage they don't do that and then after like two or three years, the bushes are shot when you would have got another five years. You would have got five years in total out of a bush, but there's no way to know whether they do that or not. So let's do that. So there you go. Now the suspension is back under load. And as you can see, the bars are much straighter. I can do that, finally do that bit up then put the wheel back on. So that suspension all finished both sides. Just got to put that cover back on. Now I hit a pheasant about three months ago and it damaged this here and it smashed these so I've replaced it and you can see there's a crack still left there but another thing that happened is it looks like I got a stone chip through here after I know after afterwards and it seems to have broken the mount so I've got a replacement so we're going to try and replace that there is a hatch underneath so hopefully I can gain access to swap it out so let's try that Right, let's just check to make sure it is the right one before I go to all the trouble of trying to replace it. Uh, is it? Yeah, I think it is. I think one of the tabs is broken, that's all. But there's a stone, 
We went right through the middle of it. Funny enough, these seem very susceptible on this car. That one over there has also been replaced before as well for exactly the same thing. I guess it's as the stones come up. Anyway, let's open the hatch and see if we can gain access from the back to find out what exactly is broken. So access through the hatch was too limiting to remove it. So I've actually taken the trim Luckily it's in two pieces, which makes life so much easier because you can just leave the back one in. Now I've got full access, we can see what's going on. I haven't even looked at it yet, I just took it out. So I'm gonna have a quick look and see what's broken and whether I can swap it or whether it's broken from a mounting point on the bumper. So the bottom bracket broke off on the impact of the stone chip. But I did notice that this bracket hasn't didn't have a bolt in it. So all the weight was on this one and that one, so that could explain it. So I'm gonna have to jerry-rig some kind of bolt because I don't have anything for that one. Uh, it should be something that looks a bit like this. So I might have to make up a bolt that I've probably got somewhere because it's better to be connected here. Oh, okay, so it's like a press fit. That's weird. Okay, I'll have to figure that out. So now we've got to do is put the new one back in. So that's the new one installed. I managed to find a screw that was going to work. So it's now all fitted. I tested it and it runs. All I've got to do now is put back the wheel arch, put the wheel back on and we've done the jobs. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> so there you go, all fitted and it works. Got a few other bits to do. I need to sort out the lights. They've gone a bit frosty. She needs a good wash, I must admit. I just got to lower the jack, do up the nuts, and it's done. So there you go, new suspension on both sides all done, and I replaced the fog light. Would I recommend doing the suspension yourself? Definitely no. It's very dangerous, don't like doing it myself, but it probably saved me the best part of 200 pounds. Now there's lots of jobs you can do on your own car, but front suspension when you're compressing springs, it's much better if you've actually got the machine that does it and you can do it in five minutes instead of the best part of 40 minutes but being that it saved me 200 pound i can then put that to another rc so thanks very much bit of a random one but uh, i hope you enjoyed that sort of but uh, i'm off to have a shower because i am covered in sweat and oil see you on the next one Bye bye